presents the Winfield Cup. Welcome to Belmore Sports Ground for this Winfield Cup match between Canterbury-Bankstown and Parramatta. Grand finalists last year and certainly the dominant teams of the 80s were the honour list reading Canterbury 1980, Parramatta 81, 82, 83, Canterbury again in 84 and 85 and then Parramatta again in 86. After 17 rounds of the Premiership completed in 87, both are fighting to stay in touch with the top five. Canterbury on 20 points, Parramatta on 18. When they met in round five at Parramatta Stadium, the Eels were the victors with a final scoreline of 20 points to eight. The Bulldogs come into this match after a 24 points to eight win over Western Suburbs last weekend. While for Parramatta, they were gallant in defeat at the hands of Manly by 30 to 22. The Canterbury team lineup today is Farrah, O'Brien, Whitfield, P. Mortimer, Curry, Lamb, S. Mortimer, Captain, Langmack, Folks, C. Mortimer, Jarvis, Bugden, Tucks. Parramatta's team for this clash is Delroy, Erickson, Muggleton, Jackson, Chalmers, Kenny, Sterling, Captain, Linda, Laurie, Wynne, Liebeter, Taylor and Jurd. The referee for the State Bank big game is Mick Stone. It's Parramatta running from left to right will be kicking off. Canterbury will be receiving the ball. And away they go. The referee, Mr Mick Stone. Well, the first ball's been dropped by Langmack, but dropped behind him, and he was able to come up with the rebound. Well, Canterbury will start this campaign of theirs now with uh, strength in the forwards. Tunks comes on the ball, gets very close to getting through. There was only one there to handle him, and that was Paul Taylor right round the boot tops. The kick's been put in now. Delroy's underneath it, drops it behind him got possession of the ball 10 yards out from his line tackled about 13 meters away from his line Chalmers runs from dummy half runs into a, a swarm of players there but a gang tackling going on Sterling way to Jackson Jackson runs into a hornet's nest in the shape of Jarvis there moving out to Kenny Kenny's pass is a good one Straight out to Ericsson. Ericsson goes slipping and sliding up the sideline. The ground is in really good condition despite the heavy rain we've had over the last couple of days. Taylor wearing a headgear. Unusual to see him in the uh, headgear. Sterling got the kick in there. Whether or not there was a... Well, he's penalised Canterbury Banks down for being... He's penalised Parramatta for being within the... Uh, the required distance around the man receiving the football. He hadn't knocked on at the, at the point of time they were within the five yards. But already in the opening minutes, we've seen the different set of tactics to be used by both sides. Canterbury with that swarming defence of theirs, especially in the forwards, their centres driving in on the 5.8s all the time. And Parramatta, the keys will be Peter Sterling and Brett Kenny as always. They'll be trying to cut, cut out passes, long balls to try and catch Canterbury out wide. David Fordham on the sideline. The breeze is favouring which side? It's favouring Canterbury uh, quite heavily in this first half, Rex. And one glaring thing we've noticed already with that uh, bust up the middle by Peter Tunks. Interesting to note that Parramatta have the second worst defensive record in the league in 87, which is quite unusual for a Parramatta side. Away they come with Linda getting a, to the dregs now, getting the pass on to Delroy. That was a kick through that was put in by Steve Mortimer. A kick and chase situation. Jackson out to Peter Wynn. Goes firmly up the blind side. Tucks comes in, comes in and appeared to me to give uh, a bit of a blow to the body. A bit of a dust up here now. Tunks and Lee Beater coming to grips there. I think from the look on either face, uh, neither of them were really serious about going on with it. Taylor. This tiny little man, this uh, little diminutive fellow playing with all these big Canterbury forwards. Astonishing. Very strong head-on tackle there by Langmack. Jerd. Out to Kenny. Kenny tries to release the ball around the side of the body but can't get it away. 
Bates on the ground, knocked forward. It'll be a Canterbury Bankstown put in. Well, Canterbury was certainly up very quick. The, to my way of thinking, they were well inside the five. Very lucky that another penalty hadn't gone Parramatta's way. Canterbury come up with this one. Steve Mortimer runs the blind side. He'll be looking for a big game today, particularly against Peter Sterling. And now the crowd start their usual chant of getting back on side. Well, we've got a player down injured at the moment. Pat Jarvis in a lot of pain. A man that uh, New South Wales can't afford to lose with the State of Origin teams announced tonight. Also the fact that with this game now, Peter Tunk's back in form and Peter Tunk's out to regain his New South Wales blue jumper as well. Peter Sterling there won't offer him a hand, I don't blame him. Well, that should have been penalised, he didn't touch it with his foot. So we've got room, uh, rules for the injured and uh, rules for the kick. That's an absurd bit of decision there by referee Stone. From the moment they're injured, it doesn't make any difference. And he failed to touch that with his foot. Should have been a penalty directly in front. <laughs> God, spare me days. Parramatta come up with a scrum win. Kenny driven sideways in the tackle. Linda. Well, Jarvis is going to make his uh, removal from the field. We'll get a, an update from uh, David Fordham on who will be the replacement. Meanwhile, Muggleton comes up with a, a good run to get to within 10 metres of the halfway line. Taylor. Sterling. With a pass away to win. Wynn's gone through. The pass goes to Jackson. He can't handle it. Lambs there to scoop up the dregs. Eight metres over the halfway line. Peter Kelly, the replacement, David. Yes, he's a man wearing jersey number 40. Pat Jarvis had a lot of paid wrecks, and that's not a good sign for the New South Wales State of Origin side. No, well, it's not a good sign that Pat uh, Kelly's come on either as a replacement because he had a great deal of trouble keeping up with the action in the reserve grade. I can't imagine it'll go any better in first grade for him. Steve Mortimer switching it across the ruck to Curry. Curry's coming in from the wing. And there's a penalty. Failure to get away from the tackle player. And that will be a penalty. Showing his consistency, Michael Stone, from one end of the field. Parramatta receiving the same sort of treatment. Now Canterbury get there. Deserts an interesting Tony, Kel uh, Tony Curry there in five. Man coming off that pass from Steve Mortimer. He, uh, he might be wearing number five, but Curry is actually playing in the fullback role. Farrah in one and uh, back in the centre position. We've had ten minutes of play. There's no score. This could be the opening score. Goes back very slowly for the first four paces, then hurries the last couple. Shortens it all down away in, strikes the ball sweetly. It's a goal, Canterbury two, Parramatta nil. Taylor, Sterling, Kenny, cut out pass to Jackson. Jackson's got up through the bus, through the uh, defence, got it out to Chalmers. Chalmers gets towards the halfway line. Kenny. Sterling turns it back to the blind to Kenny and Kenny's pass goes straight over the sideline. They get all the forward errors like that. A couple of mistakes come up in the Parramatta side mainly because of their eagerness to try and catch Canterbury. Switches of play, they're trying to look out wide. On the fringes outside in the back line there certainly is a lot of gaps appearing in Canterbury Bankstown's defence. Well Canterbury have been uh, awarded a penalty. Parramatta infringing the five yards in the ruck. Terry Lamb's going to take the kick at goal. I think the man that will probably come up here is Colin Whitfield. Terry Lamb, this is probably far too out for, for Terry Lamb and the Englishman Colin Whitfield, who 
wearing three and because of that back line reshuffle finds himself on the wing a noted a prolific goal kicker uh, back home for his club Halifax Whitfield will take it uh, seven meters inside the half the winds at his back as I see it, David, the wind may have freshened a little bit. It has freshened, uh, but this is certainly not a distance problem for Colin Whitfield. As uh, Graham mentioned, one of the most prolific point scorers in the uh, British Premiership. In fact, he was uh, brought across from Wigan purely for his goal kicking uh, to the Halifax club. And he played in that uh, Challenge Cup final, which Graham Eady and Chris Anderson played in back on May 2. Well, he's around the corner, stylus, but not very far around the corner. Three paces. Gives that a oik. And has got it. So Canterbury go to a four points to two lead over Parramatta. And we've had 18 minutes of play. Muggleton's got the ball on the mound. Strikes it. Langmack takes it, feeds it to Curry. Curry tackled just about on his quarter line. Bugden, Steve Mortimer, Cherry uh, Steve O'Brien. Bugden, Tunks. Still midfield there. Chris Mortimer came hard on the burst. It goes back to Farrah for the kick downfield. Delroy feels that well. Paul Dunn's on the sideline with you, David. Yes, he certainly is, Rex. And Paul, uh, knee injuries to Canterbury Ford seem to be pretty fashionable. Sad news for Pat Jarvis. Yeah, very sad for Pat. They said he dislocated his knee, came out and went straight back in. Well, Dunny, you've been on the sidelines for a while with an injury. How long before we see you sporting the blue and white of Canterbury again? Uh, about three weeks, Dave, after the bye, we place you in. And we've also got a problem with Michael Potter. How long's he out for? Um, well, he's got another five weeks in past and probably a couple of weeks after that. Before he well, it's a uh, great strength to be able to come back uh, looking towards the semi-finals. Canterbury obviously still a big threat if they can uh, grab a spot in the top five. Today a very vital match. Yeah, I think so, David. Like, we've won the last three in a row and uh, we're only four points off second spot at the moment. If we win today and East lose, then we're only two points. OK, so well, still a chance at the speed of recovery to you and uh, Pat Jarvis. Thanks. Bye -bye. Peter Sterling, meanwhile, has used his uh, alacrity to... Uh, and dexterity to a great uh, degree with a lovely kick down the sideline that Curry was dancing along beside it but failed to uh, pick up. Canterbury come up with it. Looks like a try on here. Cut. Running well. Oh, and O'Brien, the man that they swear by up here, has put the football down. Great break by Canterbury, the first time they've really cut loose out wide. A terrific pass from Terry Lamb to put Curry into the open spaces and an excellent pass from Curry as he was going down. It was just to the side of O'Brien, a pass that he should have taken. He had plenty of room in which to take on Michael Erickson. And there he is, Brian Jackson, finally being forced to leave the field. And Tony Casado out there in 16. Tony Casado takes the field in number 16. Pat Kelly in number 40. They've used up two of their four replacements. Win goes to dummy half. On a stand jerb. Motors forward about eight metres. Paul Taylor having a run from dummy half. Now stand jerb at dummy half. Sterling. Cut out pass to Kenny. Delroy. I'm frightened this fella's going to break in two. Every time I see him tackle, his body goes into gyrations. He's a smart player, no question about it, but I sometimes wonder whether he's strong enough. Well, some of the Canterbury backs were caught offside in that defensive uh, area. The penalty's been taken. Taylor goes for a sprint. First tackle on a Sterling. Chalmers comes in from the wing. Now Lee Beater. Plows forward another eight or ten metres. Win. 
away to Jurd, who was wrapped up straight away. No room to move at all. Taylor, Sterling, Kenny, pass there out to Laurie. Laurie's got it away on the wing to uh, the fullback Delroy. Sterling puts a bomb up. It's going to fall in the field of play. It's been knocked backwards, and he's offside. Came off a Parramatta player to the Parramatta number 10, Peter Wynn, and he was ruled offside. Steve Mortimer giving all the directions there for his Canterbury side. It's been a fairly quiet first half for the little number seven. I expect him to play a lot bigger role in the second half. We count down to seven or eight minutes now before half time. He's the real danger man in the Canterbury side, especially when he goes from the dummy half position. A very big reason why Paul Taylor finds himself wearing number 12 for Parramatta 2. He's there to keep his eye on Mortimer when he tries to run out of the middle of the ruck. Canterbury have come away with uh, some play to get them up 10 metres beyond their quarter. Tanks on the boil up the middle. Bugden, Langmack throws the dummy, offloads now to Farrar. He swivels in the defence, uh, makes a few more yards. Muggo there with Lamb has had a bit of an altercation. The play goes on, out to Kelly. Kelly charges at the opposition, the referee stops the play. And Lamb and Muggleton will come together with a touch touch. see the action I can't tell you what went on I just caught the tail end of it but the penalty goes to Parramatta so it appears that Terry Lamb was the transgressor seven minutes to half time the score Canterbury four Parramatta nil just before half time would be a great time for Parramatta to get their act together and to try on the board Taylor. Laurie, Sterling, Cassano on the quarter line. Taylor, Sterling, Kenny, steps, still going, got it. Extraordinary acceleration, this fella. Linda. Sterling. Well, he's picked off there after making about seven or eight metres and driven backwards. The last tackle coming up. He's not there to do anything about it. Muggleton gets a kick in. This will go to Curry. Stands his ground, takes it well. So back they come to the quarter line. Uh, Mick Stone's picked up Andrew Farrar. He put a shoulder charge into Mick Delroy as he was trying to follow the ball. Andrew Farrar, the man wearing the number one jumper. It'll be out here. Delroy there just staying to position himself outside Muggleton. He's coming into the hill, coming to the pitcher from the right-hand side. And Andrew Farrar is the man that decides to put the shoulder charge down. Michael Stone is waving his finger in back play at the incident. Had no trouble in picking him off. Now Muggo from... Around about 12 metres out and about 10 metres off centre. He's OK. It's Parramatta 2, Canterbury Banks down 4, with 4 minutes to go to half time. Terry Lamb. To restart the action. Taken by Linda. Gets out to the quarter line. Win. Sterling. 
Quesada. Sterling. Getting in each other's way there. Two of them went for that ball. Taylor to Sterling. Kicking downfield. Curry feels it. Away to O'Brien. O'Brien's got over two of them. Three of them. Think strongly. He's up over the quarter and put out finally by a top tackle from McDelroy. Kelly. Steve Mortimer. Long cut out pass to Terry Lamb. Lamb to Farrah. Farrah to Peter Mortimer. Away out there to uh, Colin Whitfield, who was playing on the wing in that particular movement. Good defence from Parramatta. Terry Lamb steps, goes back towards the line again, gets it away to Whitfield again. Bugden, Steve Mortimer, Langback, Steve Mortimer. Still got a couple of tackles to go. Terry Lamb. Peter Mortimer. He's broken the tackle. Oh, yes, it's a good one. Peter Mortimer's the scorer of it at full stretch. He's come up with a great solo try there. Showed the ball, and they fell for it. So often a game can change just prior to the halftime break on the State Bank replay. All the skills, Peter Mortimer. Don't worry about the greying hair. It's showing nothing but plenty of experience. Peter Sterling went for the dummy. Brett Kenny held off thinking the pass was going, and he just stretched to make the line. Plenty of hesitation in the Parramatta defence. The crowd was calling for offside from Paul Taylor. But Peter Mortimer stepping back inside. Plenty of room to move there. There goes Sterling with the first dummy, and the defence holds off with the second one. Great skills from Peter Mortimer. First class uh, try to Peter Mortimer, who's got 28 years officially on the board, but uh, it's uh, a hell of a lot of experience in that. Whistler's gone, and a, uh, an interesting get first half of football. We've got Canterbury try to Peter Mortimer. Goals, Lamb two from two, Whitfield one from two. Parramatta's four points came from... Uh, Carabatta's two points came from Muggleton, one from two attempts. So an astonishing game of football. We'll have some more of the same in just a moment. Well, Parramatta have got it all to do. Ten points to two in deficit at half-time. Canterbury playing with some authority, although they've lost Pat Jarvis with what we've got a report on. David Fordham, you can give us the information on that. Well, apparently the Canterbury uh, officials are being a little bit guarded. They did say that it's only ligament and cartilage damage, but Paul Dunn, who does know what knee injuries are all about, did tell us on the sideline it was a dislocated knee. So let's hope it is the former and not the, the major injury to Pat Jarvis. The breeze has dropped, Rex, and one thing that I'm pleased to report, the sun is shining, as you know, sitting on the touchline, those clouds did look a bit ominous early in the first half. OK, well, we're back with the action now. Parramatta in possession about uh, eight metres outside their quarter. Away to Sterling. He elects to kick. It'll be fielded by Steve O'Brien. He's already been responsible for one particularly good run, in which he defeat th uh, defeated three defenders. Andrew Farrar. Going a blind side, not very heavily populated with attackers there. Has Curry gone for a sprint up the blind? They're not guarding at Parramatta. Steve Mortimer. Langmack on the charge, 10 metres inside the Parramatta half. Swinging it back to Steve Mortimer. Out to O'Brien, and the young man goes very, very strongly and hard for five or six metres. Back to Lamb. 
Gets a grubber kick in. I think it was touched in flight. Casado's fallen on it. Now Taylor's a dummy half. To Kenny, they're passing the ball very, very dangerously close to their line. They're only about a metre out from their, their goal line. With a couple of long passes. Muggledon onto Linda, and that looked a modicum forward. Peter Wynn. They're out to the quarter line. It's the fifth tackle. Ricochet again. Peter Kelly's fallen on it for the Canterbury Banks down side. They'll be disorganised Parramatta back inside to Bugden. Away to Kelly. Sterling sticking to his guns. He's got a bit of a bear hug and he's not letting go. Terry Lamb. They drive him back about four metres. Bugden turns it on the inside. It's a low pass. Went to the ground. Was scooped up without uh, knocking on by Steve Mortimer. Now Mortimer's complaining about having the ball knocked out of his hands. He's been around long enough to know that's not on. Well, Mr. Stone wants that all again. Sterling has to fall on that at the base of the scrum. Away to Kenny. Mark Laurie. Taylor. Jerd. Very hard hit. Chris Mortimer responsible for that. I think Bob Linder was tackled on suspicion then, didn't have the football. Sterling's kick goes back towards the corner. It's fielded by Curry. Out to O'Brien. And Erickson comes to him, grabs him by the arm and... Down he goes, Lamb to Farrah. <laughs> Bugden, Mortimer. Well, he's tried that two or three times today. That's the nearest he's been to success. Langmack drops a pass to O'Brien. A couple of metres short of the uh, quarter line, Parramatta's end, on to Kelly. Bugden, Mortimer, Lamb, Farrah, Pat. Peter Mortimer on to Terry Lamb. Got the pass away, but it was intercepted by Parramatta. And once again, the Parramatta defence saying to fall for the Peter Mortimer dummies. On this occasion, though, the pass went too early to Terry Lamb. He didn't take the full back in off the tackle. Casado trying to dummy Farrah and got uh, a heavy tackle. Lamb has lost the football. Peter Taylor was responsible for that. And I think Terry Lamb's there. A little bit of a punch-up going on in goal, but there was a moment when... Paul Taylor lost the football in a tackle, and from there, Lamb was able to go over. On the State Bank replay, very sloppy defence from Parramatta. They need a big performance, especially in the first ten minutes of the second half. It's just, just not there. Paul Taylor, the man, was robbed of the football. Terry Lamb was there to pick up the dregs, but it was Paul Lamb just coming back into play after being down for, for attention for some time in back play. He had a clash of heads with Terry Lee He was groggy onto his feet. He's come up with a major mistake, and Terry Lamb there to put the nail in the coffin for Parramatta. That really <coughs> is unforgivable. And uh, the only thing in Paul Taylor's uh, favour is that uh, he had the ball stolen by probably the largest man on the field in Peter Tunks. But 
really to slip him into the hooking role. He's done nothing wrong except that, but to slip him into the hooking role that I was not really fair to him. Meanwhile, the scorers crept along to 14 points to two. The conversion from Lamb will make it even more so. Well, Terry Lamb's got a lot of problems here with the thigh muscles, so he's giving the call out to Steve Mortar. His captain's coming up now. He obviously can't run it out, so Colin Whitfield will be the man that will come back after already having made success with one from two, a long range attempt earlier on. So they certainly lose nothing in the goal kicking department. The dimensions of the kick, about 16 metres out from the goal line and possibly about 20 metres off centre. Colin Whitfield. He's successful. So the score slips away down to Canterbury 16, Parramatta 2. Well, Terry Lamb has not come from the field. He's uh, still standing in the in goal area. He got some stretching done by the trainer. Andrew Farrer takes it. The kickoff. Brings it out to three metres from the quarter. Langmack. Corralled there by Taylor, like throwing a steer. Duggan, O'Brien. Mortimer on a tux. Tux on the drive. Hitting that line enormously hard. Kelly. Farrah. Delroy looking into the sun from where he is. Feels that okay on about the second bounce. And gets out to his quarter line. 16 points to two. The Parramatta searching for a lot of answers. Let's just see how quickly they try and go out wide through Kenny and Sterling. Sterling, Kenny, Muggledon having two snatches of that football. Didn't get it to his hands cleanly. Sterling, Wynn, Delroy, stepping. He's turned him around. Oh, he was taken out of it there by Curry with a legitimate head-on tackle. Sterling kicks downfield. It's going to roll very close to the in goal area. Peter Mortimer uh, picks it up. That'll be taking a, a fair bit of time to get back on side. Curry, Steve Mortimer. Whitfield comes away with a, a relieving run. Bugden, Steve Mortimer, Andrew Farrah. Curry, Langmack, well Peter Kelly's being led from the field at the moment, yes, what? yes Rex, a bloodied mouth, he's been replaced uh, by James Donnelly wearing number 22, but Kelly's been a bit groggy since he's come back on from half time, he took a nasty knock a moment ago, and James Donnelly's just received uh, instructions on the telephone here on the touchline from the Canterbury coach Warren Ryan. Chris Mortimer, suicidal sort of a pass, he was fed there by his brother. Tunks, got a pass away there to Folks, who hasn't played a role that uh, one would say was instrumental in the win in this particular game. Lamb kicked, went ahead, got to it, scooped it up, got a pass away again. Six to go, out to Andrew Farrah, Farrah to Steve Mortimer, Mortimer out to O'Brien, O'Brien there, he's there. So another error, allowing Terry Lamb to scoot through, pick up the ball, see it again.
He's noticed this the second time today when the defence, there was nobody at home. On the State Bank replay, a beautiful little grubber kick by Lamb. Terry Levy would have tried to get there. He had him by one hand, but plenty of support for Lamb as he now starts to look around. The pass was knocked back inside by a Parramatta player. Play on called, Mick Stone. Andrew Farris saw the opportunity out wide. Steve Mortimer read the play exceptionally well to get there, defeated the line. And Steve O'Brien, plenty of strength in situations like that, although the replay we might have to check again to see if he really did ground that ball properly. Here we see Terry Levy arriving just too late to stop Terry Lamb. He bounced back up to his feet. Plenty of support, as I said before, the ball knocked by Parramatta. Now, Andrew Farris searches out wide, and the problem here is, did Steve O'Brien ground the ball correctly? As we see him go for the line, he was just short of the line, and he did get the ball down. Plenty of strength in situations like that. Virtually unstoppable, Steve O'Brien taking over the mantle from the man that was renowned in that position, Eric Groth. Steve O'Brien, 22 years of age, some say a natural for the New South Wales State of Origin side. We shall see. Well, whatever injury Terry Lamb had before, it's uh, soon over. A knock to a nerve, perhaps, in the leg. Numbed it. He's OK now. Going to attempt the conversion from the quarter line junction with the sideline. Well, there it is, 20 points to two. Canterbury really got a death, uh, a death grip on this game. And I'm afraid Parramatta are for the high jump in 1987. Tux gets a one-handed pass away. I think it was Andrew Farrow fielded that. And now Parramatta are getting ready to make a change. Yes. Peter Ford is on in number 21. He played uh, lock forward in reserve grade uh, when they suffered a 14 points to six Rex. It looks like he's looking down the barrel of uh, two losses in one uh, afternoon here at Belmore. Well, it was a dreadful, dreadful game, the reserve grade, if uh, you were a Parramatta fan, because they couldn't hold the football and they were leading the competition when they get, went into the game and they've come out of it very badly. Steve Mortimer gets the bounce. Kicks ahead, gets the bounce and then lost the ball and has been designated as a tackler before he got the ball. Brett Kenny was a man that had read the chip was on. He was just running shoulder to shoulder with Steve Mortimer McStone, arguing the fact that he affected the tackle. Well, again, that's a fairly tough penalty for my way of thinking. Lamb a metre outside the quarter, about seven or eight metres off centre. Should have little trouble with this. I've got to tell you, it rained all night, Balgala, which is on the seaside, and I anticipated when I saw rain this morning this game would be played in a quagmire, but I believe there's been no rain inland at all. Definitely coastal. Bugden, through the pass, nowhere, out to Whitfield. Picked up the dregs. Lang Mack back inside, oh they'll thank him for that. Stephen Folks ought to uh, give him a lock of his hair from that one. Bugden living in that dummy half position. Away to Peter Tunks. Beautiful handling. Out to Steve Mortimer. Andrew Farrer. Andrew Farrer going strongly. Gets a pass back inside as goes to ground. Picked up by Terry Leebeater. Canterbury are a very strong side, but they are incapable sometimes of doing the clever things easy. They made a real meal of that. They had three-man overlap there at one stage, reduced to two, and then the pass went to ground. Sterling, quick hands. Beautifully away to win, win uh, to Casado, rather. Picked off five metres inside Canterbury's half. Stan Jurd. We've got uh, 15, 17 minutes in this match to go. Wynn kicks ahead. Steve Mortimer takes it beautifully. Gets it to Casada to uh, Curry, who goes to ground with it. 
Chris Mortimer, who's had a very solid game today. Langmack, heavily dumped on the quarter line. Still going the blind side, out to the Tux. Looking to get one of those one-handed passes of his away. Lamb, Mortimer, Farrah, Peter Mortimer, out to Whitfield. Whitfield, not at quite enough pace to get away from Chambers, but offended his face and ran on for another seven yards. Lamb. That was Chris Mortimer got the pass back inside. Peter Mortimer finishes up with it. That was a handover. Quite a bright attack from Canterbury this afternoon. A strong scoreline of 22 points to two. But this is the sort of thing that's coming back to win the fans at Canterbury. The defence is starting to come back. There was stories out of last week's clash against Western Suburbs that the forwards were starting to regain the enthusiasm of saw them win titles in 84 and 85. And only just missed last year. The defence has been exceptional today and matter have really struggled at times to find the gaps. That pass from Kenny to Linda there was uh, much too hard in the circumstances. Whitfield was all over him and he had little chance to take it. See it again. Peter Ford, running from dummy half, got up and played it, I thought he had a marker but the marker obviously was standing away to the left, to the, uh, left. Taylor, Sterling, Kenny, Delroy, this will be, I don't believe there was any malicious intent in this. I don't believe it was even very hard. Stephen Fox coming from the field. Who's going on? In number 21, Rex, Greg Whitbread from the reserve grade side. Greg Whitbread, 21. Okay, the penalty's been taken. Lee Beater comes on the charge. Have not been uh, ferocious today, Jerd or uh, P. <laughs> Sterling, Kenny, Delroy again running into a brick wall out there. Sterling resorting to the kick. Ball goes into the end goal area. Oh! Very close indeed. Brett Kenny very nearly got a hand to that. See that again. Well, an excellent kick from Peter Sterling and a dangerous thing for a fullback, I always believe, just to knock that ball like that. I, if you can get one hand to it, why not try and get the two and force it, go down with the ball. Curry's got an egg on his face from a previous match, so uh, I'm surprised at him doing something like that. Terry Lamb with uh, nine and a half minutes to go. 22 points to two. Stan Jurd comes around the edge of the ruck there and made a bit of an inroad. Taylor, win, stands in the tackle. Back to Taylor on a lee beater. Through an overhead pass, out to two, Ericsson, on to Chalmers, the other wing three-quarter, who goes in for a try. As simple as that, and as out of character as that. That's the way that Parramatta try happens. See it again. They haven't given up. Strong uh, play by Parramatta. Short line side here. We see the ball coming around to Terry Levita, who gets an excellent long ball away. He read that there was gaps out wide. He drew in Peter Mortimer and also Paul Langmack. Gave the start for Michael Erickson and back inside for Tony Chalmers. Parramatta trying to put some pride back into that scoreline. The game is, is virtually gone as we see again the, the short blind here that Parramatta are trying to work away at. They haven't been able to find any gaps out wide through the defences of Peter Mortimer and also Andrew Farrah. And out wide they had the numbers for Erickson back inside for Tony Chalmers for the clear run to the line. Peter Mortimer giving chase. 
Muggleton will attempt to convert this from the quarter line and about uh, 10 metres in from the sideline, nine and a half metres perhaps. Moving in. Just away to the left, I believe. So the score remains. Canterbury backs down 22, Parramatta 6. Terry Lamb away. Goes a little shorter this time. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Lee Beater let it go. Pulled away from it and Wynn was sort of rooted to the spot and couldn't move. So the ball's over the sideline. Casado playing as a 5-8 there in that particular scrum. Can we defence still pretty keen? Keen not to let them score any more points. There's a, a kick by Sterling has taken play back towards the halfway line. So this will be fed by Sterling as it was only the uh, third tackle but it's one against the feed. A one by Canterbury, Terry Lamb comes up with it. Mortimer trying to make that initial bust from dummy half. Bugden, Langmack to Lamb. I think they're a wake up to that one. Peter Tucks, good solid tackle there. Over the top by Stan Jerd. Bugden. Last tackle coming up now. Now Bugden's turn to get hurt. I think perhaps he's got a cramp. About five metres out from the quarter line. Steve Mortimer, Langmack, Tunks, Whitbread, bounced off one defender. Steve Mortimer, Andrew Farrow, changes direction, gets a pass away. And knock on was the ruling by the referee. Well, it's the longest minute in history. I said about a minute and a half ago. There it is. So the score, just as the crowd get deafening, the score line reads Canterbury 22, Parramatta 6. The try scorers have been Peter Mortimer, Terry Lamb, Steve O'Brien, Lamb three goals, Whitfield two goals. That's the Canterbury 22. Parramatta 6 were Chalmers, one try, Muggleton one goal. A very substandard performance by Parramatta and I think that they would be just about finished for the year. But uh, mathematically it's possible for them to make it, but not theoretically. Every week they're at it.